Good afternoon. So I'm going to let a tiny bit of time go by as people get into the room, and I see some are already coming in. Um, and I want to introduce myself. I'm Gigi Davis, the Job and Internship Coordinator at Piedmont Virginia Community College. Um, the students get lots of emails from me, usually on Monday, sometimes an extra time in the week, but I try to not inflict too much email on you guys. But I hope that you guys are seeing that, you know, there are lots of jobs um, that are happening. Uh, you know, employers really do want to talk to you. Um, and, so, um, and so that's where um, it's great. And there's a lot, there are a lot of accounting jobs that I've been pushing out there. I was just uh, Kim and I were talking about, I wish our accounting uh, group of students was twice the size, if not three times the size. <laughs> so um, so for the students who are here, or the community members, because there could, could be some community members as well, um, please put your questions in the chat. Uh, we did not enable the Q&A because I thought it's confusing to have a Q&A at a chat. So feel free to put your questions in the chat. Um, we are so very fortunate to have Kim Martin and Pam Weiss um, from uh, Mark Hansman Weibel, Weibel, what we <laughs> like, Weibel. I'm watching it already. <laughs> but and actually, a big thing that I look at every time I walk out to my car, I walk by our accounting lab that Hansman Weibel was wonderful to sponsor once upon many moons ago. Um, and so, and then just Kim has been wonderful to come to many a job fair. Um, and talk with students. And then also she's been great to bring, uh, actually you come to our networking events and you, <laughs> you I, I bother you all the time, don't I, Kim? <laughs> okay, I love PVCC. <laughs> and so, and she was wonderful to, re to recruit Pam to be a hot part of this conversation. Um, Pam is a tax staff associate. Uh, uh, Kim is the HR administrator um, with Hansman Weeble. So I'm gonna let them talk a little bit about their career journey, where they are, where they might be going, and uh, so Kim, why don't you take it away? Wow, so I, I was kind of jotting that down to kind of go through the whole thing because I think there's this idea that you're supposed to know what you want to be when you grow up. And um, I had so many twists and turns to get where I am and in the perfect landing spot. So um, I came out of high school, I was a barber, I'm a master barber by trade, still keep my license all these years later. Um, I was a flight attendant for 20 years and took some time off to raise my kids and then decided uh, I worked for a student travel company in their air division, which seemed like an easy leap. Um, and then I decided I really wanted an education for me as opposed to for a job. So I took classes at PVCC and yay and transferred. I didn't do the uh, transfer process to UVA. I applied to UVA and then graduated there with a double major and it opened doors. It didn't necessarily change. It was very fulfilling for me and it opened doors and it introduced me to sort of the world of HR and um, through different twists and turns and now at Hansman Weeble and I'm the place I need to be. So um, all I can say is just never say no to opportunities. You just never know how it's going to shake out. Sage advice. <laughs> <laughs> I used to work when I was at UVA, I worked in the office called the Office of Career Planning and Placement. And I was like, well, it's not always about. No. <laughs> and we didn't, we only did externship placement. So I was glad when we changed our name to uh, Career Services. So Pam, tell us about your, you. Uh, I you know, graduated from college about 20, 22 years ago now. Uh, I got my degree in math and um, my secondary education teaching certi certification. Um, but I got married and started having a family and decided I really wanted to be home and raise them and I was able to. And I have four kids, so, <laughs> and they span in age. They're, my oldest is 21 and my youngest is eight. And um, so I was home for many years doing odd things here and there. I did some math tutoring and Odd thing, you know, a lot of volunteering. Um, and then when my youngest started preschool, I decided I'm still fairly young. I'm, you know, in my 40s, I need to have a job. <laughs> but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I wasn't sure I really wanted to go back and do teaching. Um, so that's when I took my first accounting class at PBCC. And, and really enjoyed it. I really love working with numbers. And so it was kind of a natural fit. 
for me. And then I took another class and then another class. And uh, just, but before I kept going down that road, I think I decided I probably should maybe work, see if I enjoy the field before I take too many more classes. And that's when I got a job <clears throat> with Hanson Weevil, sorry. Um, I joined their temporary um, last the TRPC is what it's called that's during the tax season and um, I did that last year 2020 right <laughs> um, and that was quite a year but um, I had a great time I learned a lot and then I was offered a position to work here permanently but part-time so I work part-time and take classes part-time and still get to go home to my children um, and do, you know, be there in the evening. So it's great, it's this great balance for me. I really enjoy the being able, and Hanson Weevil has made it possible for me to do all that, which is great. I really appreciate it. That's so cool because that's where I, I actually I would, and Pam, you could probably attest to this. The average age in our accounting pro program is probably around 25, 28. Um, it's not full of a bunch of, you know, 18 to 20 year olds, um, which, I mean, I'm, I'm having conversations with some of the local high schools saying, hey, how can we make accounting you know, more, more prevalent or make, get the high school students to realize that this is a great career field, especially if you, you know, you like math, but you don't like calculus math, you know, because that's where I have some students go, oh my gosh, it's all numbers, I'm math. And I'm like, no, 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 it's manageable math. It's math I can kind of sort of do. So, <laughs> and of course, if you feel like adding math tutoring at PBCC, I'm sure Todd would like to talk to you. Um, <laughs> we're always looking for math tutors. Um, but anyway, so so that's what it, this, it's, it's great to hear y'all's stories. You know. When you guys are involved with hiring, I know, Kim, that's the main part of your job, and Pam, you may not have been on that side, but you were interviewed. So what do you look for for candidates? Uh, what, what do you look for from candidates, especially for the more entry-level jobs? Um, and so that would be great to hear it from you. So I don't have a preconceived notion. I love candidates like Pam that are coming back into figuring out what they want to do because I, again, I really believe it's impossible. We, we change sort of what's happening in our career path along the way based on life, right? I mean, there's just lots of different things happening. Um, and so I'm just looking for curiosity. I'm looking for um, sort of this natural want to know about us and who we are and what we do. Um, I really enjoy when people take a few minutes to look at our website and even if it's not a job they're interested in as part of our, our what we offer but asking questions because we are more than just that position We're as a firm we're very community focused we're very team focused and we take what we do seriously, but we also take our team really seriously we want to make sure everybody is healthy and balanced and, and all those kind of things and so. I am just looking for somebody who wants to be part of really a second family. I mean, we're almost 100 people now. I can't believe we're getting ready to push over 100. And I don't think it's going to change. It's just we, we keep an eye on each other. We're checking each other, um, you know, making sure everybody's doing okay. And walking beside our team members during different seasons. Our CEO, Jennifer Lehman, always talks about seasons and the seasons are different all the time, right? And what's perfect for you today, is it gonna be perfect in five years or even in six months? And so um, I'm just looking for people that wanna kind of partner with us and explore and learn and be open to learning and just, um, it's, it's a never ending learning process. That's the other thing, my poor kids who are in college now, like you're never gonna stop learning, sorry. <laughs> but have a curiosity and it drives everything. So it makes it much more fun. So wide open. I don't have preconceived notions. And so Pam, I don't know if you see, see the question in the chat box, because this ties into it. Um, there's a, a Sam, thank you for your question. And he says, hi, Pam, that's an interesting job path. Are you preparing for your CPA eventually? And are you planning to work in areas other than tax? 
Well, I am taking more classes to eventually sit for my CPA. I probably am on a very long path to get there. Um, I am taking a class right now with Professor Wood, taking intermediate with, at PDCC, and I've really enjoyed that. She's a great professor. And um, so, yeah, I, I'm signing up for some summer classes, but I'm I probably am taking it a little slower than maybe some other people. But I realize that that's okay. Everybody has their own. You know, and my, I just, where I am in my life right now, I can't take, you know, lots of five classes per semester. So, so maybe one or two every semester, I'll get yeah, there. But somehow you got Kim's attention. What do you think you did to help land your job? <laughs> um, I don't, I don't really know. I, um, I think that what I love about our office is that I feel like everybody is very personable and kind. And so I think that when you're, um, I think that that's important that that comes across that you're, you know, that you care. Um, so I think that it has to be a good fit. I think when I sat, when I did my interviews, I talked to Kim, who of course welcomes everyone with such, such open arms and um, talked to Jennifer and a couple other techs. Uh, partners and so um and they were great they all you know I think what I like about Hanson Maple is I I do work in the tax department but I also do small business accounting mm -hmm. stuff as well so there is opportunity to do different stuff um so you know I don't know eventually what my long-term plan is um but I enjoy tax but I also I do enjoy I've been working on payroll tax returns this, they're all due April 30th, this past <laughs> week, and I've really enjoyed those. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I think there's lots of opportunity um, available here, definitely. Well, sky's, that actually, sky's the limit. Sorry. Really, I, know, I was just going to say, sky's the limit because um, one thing that I think so, so to answer Sam asked if, if Pam is planning to stay in tax, I will speak to that a little bit. that tax folks don't really do audits because it doesn't flow that way, but our auditors will touch tax. It's just sort of the nature of the beast. So if you have a love for tax, that's going to be your primary focus, but you're still going to be able to do some of the small business accounting things. And you're also going to be able to do some other project work, but it, it doesn't cross paths into audit because it just doesn't make sense by just the structure of everything. Um, and so, but we've had people that came in as auditors, decided they adored tax or came in as something else and switched positions. And as long as um, we have a spot or we'll find a spot, I mean, I'll never pass up a great person ever. We'll find a place for them. Now, I was, actually, that was tying into what I was thinking is that um, just describe like a day in the life of an accountant at Hansman Weeble. Hmm. <laughs> so well, I know. it's never I a dull moment is what it really is. Since we, I was uh, uh, talking to Gigi before that, I feel like it's Groundhog's Day because it's been like this pandemic has made us have an endless one day after the other tax deadlines seem to be going on forever. Um, so Pam, what does your day look like? <laughs> it, it, I think I like that it is different. You know, in January, I did a lot of payroll tax returns and W-2s and for household employees. Um, and then starting in February, I did a bunch of business returns. This was my first season of doing business returns. So I learned how to do 1065s and 1120s. And, um, and I, have a I have a couple of great supervisors who really showed me the ropes and taught me a lot this season. Uh, so I might work on those and, and potentially that can last all day depending on the return itself. Um, some are much more complicated than others. And then um, and then I didn't do a ton of 10 individual, I guess I'm using a bunch of numbers, but there are a bunch of individual returns. They're, they're all coming now, more ones that have been extended. And, um, and then in the summer, it's different because I think, well, last, I don't know, last year was so different. But a typical summer, my guess is that you, you do a lot more. You get your CTE in, so um, yeah. <laughs> I'm probably not the best person to ask. I don't work as many hours as some of the, the staff accountants and the senior accountants. Um, so that's a great point. I wanna, so, so Pam, 
I don't even know how many hours you work. We have a schedule for you that's like 27 and a half, 28 hours. She works more during our busy season, which is spring, she scales back summer, winter, kids are home. And so I, that to me is a partnership of figuring out how to make it balanced that she can still have a great family life because you want to see your kids before, you know, they go to bed. Um, and it really speaks to exactly that every day is a little bit different. You're going to have some sort of routine kind of things that come up, but it's, it's a matter of sort of managing sort of the bigger picture and then things as they pop in day to day, which I think gets lost when people are thinking about a career in accounting. They think it's going to be, you know, nose to the grindstone at your desk doing the same kind of work over and over and over. I really don't think it could be farther from the truth. You may have windows of time when you're doing similar things, but then it gets switched up and there's more things happening. And, and um, we encourage, we do a lot of CPE. So all of our professional staff have uh, 40 hours of training per year. Um, even for those that it's not required, we just think it's super helpful because things are changing so often and so fast. But part of that is we may have a lot of internal team members teaching things. So it gives them the opportunity to become kind of an expert in it and then show others. And um, it gets sort of, you're, you're learning about it in a different way. Um, and so you get lots of opportunities and exposures and different kind of themes and different ideas and different things happening. And then we also encourage people to over time sort of find their niche and their sweet spot. So what is it you're really enjoying what is it you want to work more on? What is it you don't love so much? And how can you mix it up a little bit? Because in my happy place, I feel like to see everybody doing 80% of what they love, 20% of the stuff we all have to do, right? We've got to put our time in, we've got to do other things. But if we can mix it in with most of what you really enjoy doing, it's perfect. It was interesting because there, I think I went to y'all's cybersecurity um, webinar that you did for community members um, and that you guys have a cyber yeah. To you know, because anytime money is involved, there's a potential for cyber, you know, because <laughs> it seems like that's a big target. Um, yeah. <laughs> but so that's it, that's the thing is, it sounds like you not only do you guys educate each other, but you also educate the community. Um, mm -hmm. Kind of takes me over to um, you know, I know that the timing of internships because you have been wonderful to bring on interns and a lot of times I'll tell them I think the fall semester is better than the spring because you guys are so busy in the spring but I'm wondering if I'm misinforming them about that. What um, you I think it's a little bit of a mix of everything right so we have lots and lots of opportunities in the spring actually during our busy season so um, like Pam came in, TRPC, I always get the acronym wrong. It's like tax return processing center. Um, their folks are coming in and doing tax returns um, in close work with our managers and, and partners and all of that. And that's a great opportunity to see if you like accounting and like tax and like, you know, because a lot of times when people are taking accounting classes, they like the last thing they took, either an audit class or a tax class. You don't really know because you just don't know what you don't know. So it's an opportunity to try it. No harm, no foul. If you find it's not a great fit for you, that's okay. Better to find out there. And then you've got an internship on your resume or you find out it's amazing. Um, there's also other opportunities where it um, doesn't sound fun, but it's really important and instrumental. We have um, scan positions that we started a few years ago, which are handling all the tax documents coming in, organizing them, scanning them all. Um, there are some firms when you start as a new hire, that's what you're doing because it's a baseline learning what the different pieces are and how they work and how they incorporate. So there's lots of opportunities there. Um, and fall works great too. The nice thing with PBCC being so close to us and typically the students are local is we can coordinate schedules to make it work and work around um, what they're doing and kind of make it the best of all. Summer's probably the least ideal just because we have um, university interns coming in. We don't have as much work. Tax work is kind of wrapped up. They're doing a lot of cleaning up things. Um, and so the folks coming in are, it's the only time they can come in because they're so far away or just their class schedules don't accommodate. So we always have opportunities and we can often find opportunities. So it never hurts to ask. And we've also done shadowing. We've done younger students who weren't sure if accounting is what they wanted to do. So they um, came in and just sort of watched what was going on. We paired them up with, um, I don't know if it's a supervisor manager, like a hire going out on audits, that kind of thing. So they can kind of see what 
it means. And so they can get an idea if it's something that interests them. So we have lots of different things and we're always willing to try something new. Not always perfect, but we can tweak it along the way. And that's a nice thing about being nimble and being able to come up with different ideas. So. Yeah, that's great because that's where um, I, I know that the, the uh, county the county school system is going to hope is hoping to do more shadowing. Oh, that's awesome! Um, so that's where I'll be sure to uh, get you connected with my county contact. Um, and then yeah, it was. It, and I think you've actually done paid internships. Am I? And or are, are some unpaid? Because I think I've. Yeah, seen we'll never do an unpaid internship. Don't do it, kids. Don't do it. Um, <laughs> if you're doing work that is meaningful work, it's different shadowing, right? Because you're not really working, you're just sort of observing. But if you're working, you deserve to be paid for it. So we we won't do any unturn, unpaid internships. I just, I don't think it's okay. That's just my yeah. opinion. So if you need any cyber, let me know, because I've got cyber students too. <laughs> ah, excellent. All right. We'll keep that in to accounting. <laughs> it's an interesting radar. Hmm, little data analytics in there as well. So we got lots of stuff happening. So accounting <laughs> is not just taxes. I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> exactly. So do you guys utilize LinkedIn um, for hiring or suggest using LinkedIn, LinkedIn as a platform to represent yourself? Uh, um, I don't use it so much for hiring. I do think it's hugely important to have a LinkedIn profile, especially as a, a new professional. Um, have a good picture. Don't put your summer beach, whatever picture on there. Um, it's just a way for us to search people out. It's a way for us to, if someone applies, I can get an idea of who they are, what kind of things they're following. Um, it's not going to be a long page. It's not going to have a lot, a ton of information, but it, it gives you just a little bit of insight. Maybe you're following different whatever, and it gives me and an kind of a, a closer view of what's going on. And I use it so much for recruiting because I think LinkedIn is geared more for big urban areas where there's a huge population. It's not as helpful in a place like Charlottesville because to work here, you want to be here as opposed to moving from a big city for an opportunity when you can find one across town. So I'd rather have people that are in Charlottesville because I want to be here and, and have, a, you know, their lives are established here as opposed to they're just swinging through for a job and they're going to leave almost immediately, that kind of thing. But LinkedIn, I think is helpful. It's important. I, I never appreciated how important it is, but it really is important. When, when we're back to be having classes in person, I'll be starting the LinkedIn photo booth that I did previously. Oh, that's awesome. So did it once a month that we said, hey, if you want your picture taken, I'll bring my camera. I'm not a professional, but I'm not bad. Um, <laughs> but but like, Sam has another great question because this does tie, you know, we will continue with online classes. And I know you mentioned about being flexible to schedule their internships around classes. But Sam's question was, have you found online classes in the accounting discipline helpful with your schedule balancing priorities Priorities, or do you like in-person instruction or hybrid? Hmm. How's it going? I, I had a feeling about like, I, I took accounting classes. You don't want me to be your accountant. I'm just gonna put that out there right now. Um, I, for me, the online, was okay, but it was hard when I had questions. I would think that Pam probably can answer more to what that's all about. I've done both at PBCC and I, I liked going in when I had, but I, was, I had the time then to go in in the morning. It kind of worked perfectly with my son's school. But now I really like the online because I can go, I can do it in the evening and, um, I, f I found that the professors are great about getting back the questions. There's usually a discussion board and um, other classmates can, can answer questions too if they have them. Um, so I think that it's, I really, I love that they are, that that is an option, I must say, because it is, it is much more helpful in balancing everything else that you've got going on. So um, yeah, so I like well, that. Another person contributed saying, I took the accounting classes online and it was helpful. So thank you, Suhair, for adding that comment. And it'll be interesting to see what we 
what we have in the fall. I, it's actually our schedules out there. Um, people can see what 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 what's online, what's hybrid. What's, you know, so and that's it's great to have employers like Hansman Weeble be willing to work around the in person classroom um, classes. I, I do think certain students resonate better with the in person. Um, you know, but it's great to hear Pam that your comment about the the instructors being so responsive even though they're not in the classroom. So what would you guys say that how does a candidate set themselves apart? Because um, you know there there are uh, there are there are people out there. So and I love that you mentioned about their curiosity, their um, exploring, learn that the kind of like kind of like lot lifelong learner. What else do could they do? Um, whether it involves their resume, cover letter, volunteering, interning. What else do you guys look for that makes a can that will help to set a candidate apart? Resumes are helpful, obviously, because you can kind of get an idea of what they've done. Um, you do not need to put the dates you went to school and those kind of things, because frankly, it's nobody's business how old you are, and we really don't care. Um, but it's unfortunate there are some still biases out there that are just it's not fair. Um, cover letters, I think can be helpful because they give a little bit of a snapshot into um, sort of insight on the candidate, um, unless they're kind of that can, they copied it from, you know, the whatever board. But um, volunteering is great. I mean, I think in this day and age, especially in our community, we tend to do a lot of it in general. Um, Internships, I don't hold it against people if they haven't had internships, <clears throat> mostly because not everybody's life circumstances can allow for that. So um, it's really just being truthful, not stretching. Don't lie on your resume because it's gonna come out as soon as I ask a question. Um, I, I'm probably a little different in that when I interview. I, I go in with the assumption that everybody I'm talking to is smart. I'm looking more for the culture and the fit and are you going to get along with everybody? So um, one of my famous things I always talk about to people is you can be the smartest person in the room, but if you're a jerk, I don't want you working here because it can be so disruptive. Um, presentation is huge, being clean and neat, having your hair combed. Um, you know, you don't have to be dressed fancy, but it has to be clean clothes, those kind of things, which seems so elementary, but I think sometimes it gets lost a little bit. Um, and, and gearing the cover letter and even the resume a little bit to what you're applying for. So it doesn't help me if it's a generic resume that's clearly the one you use for every single thing. And I have no idea what your skill set is. Um, I have no idea, you know, knowledge of QuickBooks or knowledge of accounting. What does that even mean? I mean, so it, it's better to, to have a few different versions that you can tweak to whatever kind of position you're applying for just never lie because it will haunt you later. It just always does. Yeah, it's great points. Pam, do you have any other things that you would add to that? I think Kim covered all of it. I so, can't remember so, my resume. I mean, my cover letter that I wrote and submitted <laughs> with my application, but I think it was definitely, I think it doesn't have to be long. I think it's just oh. short and sweet and kind of what you're looking for, and um, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Tiara has a great question in the in the chat that she says, "Should resumes only be one page?" And that that's kind of ties into what you just said, Pam, with short, sweet, not too long. But do they have to be just one page, like in some other industries, or if they have enough great stuff? then go on to that second page for the resume. The cover letter, I'm always like, keep the cover letter to one page. You know, the, the resume, if there's so many amazing things, that's great. But if you're targeting it to accounting, there's other things that are awesome. But I know if you were a manager, I know what a manager does. So I don't need to have every kind of duty that's tied to that so much, where if you're applying as a manager in a certain kind of industry or something that may have more relevance. So very often it's easy to get your resume down to one page more so than you think. I mean, I, I have a, um, a little older, so I have a very long work history. I can get mine onto one page because I can target it to what I'm, I'm trying to connect with. So at, if it's longer, it's longer, but to, it, it's, it's unfortunately really true. We have short attention spans when we're looking at it because there's just so much stuff going on and so many coming in that 
if, if it's clear to me that there was not a lot of interest put down relevant to what they're applying for, that they were just throwing stuff against the wall to see what fit. I love the word that you use, targeted. Um, I constantly say, do not do a generic cover letter. To whom it may concern, I exist. I want an internship. I want a job. And it's like, well, that, that first paragraph is why them and why them in particular. Show a little research. Show that you've looked at the About Us page. Pretty soon. Absolutely. I mean, even if they address it to my CEO and it comes to me, I'm okay with that because they took an effort to figure out somebody in the firm. And so I, I, I don't mind it at all, but when it's just the who made concern or have a weird set from their phone with nothing in it and just an attachment with the resume. Yeah. I don't even mind a cover email as long as, you know, I'm really interested in bloody yada, yada. I don't need a huge story, but to have it that you couldn't be bothered to write two sentences makes me, makes me have questions. It won't make me not look at it, but it's going to make me have some questions. Right. Yeah. And, and questions is what gets you knocked out if there's a ton of candidates. Right. If there's only so much bandwidth, you know, that's, you know, to, well, so when you post positions, where do you post them? Do you post them on LinkedIn or do you post them on indeed.com? Um, how do you get the word out? Yeah, I post up on our webpage, on our, our page, handsomeweevil.com. Um, we always, and there's some stuff that looks like it's there forever. It kind of is because we are always willing to take a candidate that's great, even if we're not actively recruiting for a particular position. So um, it's not just we're retreading stuff to see what comes in. I, I lately LinkedIn's tough because it's expensive, although now they're letting you like um, put things in your own personal feed and your company feed more so it feels like I just don't want to break any rules there. So I'm a little bit more careful. Um, Indeed tends to be one. I try to put it because Indeed gets picked up a lot of places. Um, I, I'll, I'll post things at PVCC. I'll post things in the local colleges that we do a lot of recruiting at. Um, trying to expand. We really, um, uh, we've, we've always had diversity, equity, inclusion in our wheelhouse, but now we're trying to focus on it more. So I'm trying to do a deeper, wider reach to students that might not otherwise have thought of us as a possibility and an opportunity. So um, really, I'm not gonna spend a fortune to post things, but I'm also gonna try and get it out to a wide audience when possible. Ironically, I had a, a candidate we hired whose fiance went to UVA. I posted it at UVA. He went to tech, but he heard of it through her. So like, it's, it's that game of telephone, right? You just never know who's gonna see what where. So. Anything's possible. Yeah. Pam, how did you find Hansman Weeble? How did, how did, 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 was it somebody said, oh, you should, because the networking thing in this town is, is does work. <laughs> <laughs> I think I found it on the PVCC website. I think you had listed it on it did. the blog listing and that's how I found it. I did, <laughs> yep. Try yeah. to use the PVCC website when I can. Yeah, I, I, I sometimes push things out there and I never hear from the employer or the students whether they connected. And I'm like, I hope this is all worthwhile. Um, <laughs> I still get those emails that I, you know, I, I actually send them to my children now. Oh, good. Actually, I, that's actually that both Pam and Kim, that ties into, it's funny, I have more and more people following our Facebook group who are, you know, because we open all of our job listing resources to any community members. And I'm getting more and more uh, parents going, okay, my child's coming back for the summer for an internship. And I was like, well, just look at our page. Look at our, you know, our job listing resource. So take advantage of it because, you know, PVCC is a relatively small community college. And I do find that we, we touch people across their lifespans. You know, when, you know, whether they kind of like, hey, I'm thinking about now going into graphic design and they come and take a graphic design class or, oh, I really want to do cyber. We have a much older population in our cyber program. But anyway, I digress. So back to my little list <laughs> of questions. Um, what classes do you suggest that students who are considering accounting, what should they, you know, who as their career, what classes do you think they should take? I mean, I know we have our accounting classes, but are there particular accounting classes that you're like, hey, this is the best way to test it out? Or are there other ones that you think are supplemental to the accounting program that you were like, oh, thank goodness I had taken that? 
I'm going to kick this one to you, Pam. <laughs> well, I think you have to take, well, usually you take business classes as well as accounting classes, but starting with accounting principles one and two to see if you like it. Um, and then I think I've taken introduction to business. I haven't taken a ton of business classes yet, but if you want to sit for your CPA, you have to take business classes as well. Um, so I think you need 24 credits in each, but you can have 30 in accounting and 18 in a business. But so definitely try, take some business classes. <laughs> um, and I found that you don't, if some of the upper level accounting classes aren't offered directly through PVPC, but because it's part of a bigger network, you can take them through Nova online. Um, so I've taken a class that way. And um, so you can get them. They're just, um, it might not be in class, might not be in the classroom. I've had a lot of students not realize that they can do classes at sister colleges during the same semester, even if they're getting financial aid, because our financial aid office can direct some of their financial aid package to that other community college. So that's where, um, you know, that it's a great point to bring up. Um, so what kind of industry trends do you think students should be aware of? Because, you know, some, you know, you, uh, Kim, I think you mentioned it earlier, uh, you do so much training because things are constantly changing. What do you, what do you think is happening in this, in this industry? Well, it's, it's really progressed outside of just doing compliance work, which is meaning doing an audit, making sure you're following the rules or just doing tax work. Um, you know, there's, there's all of the business advisory things. There's the um, cybersecurity type stuff. There's the data analytics. There's, um, you know, forensic auditing. There's just so many things. I think that there's a lot of different opportunities for people that don't even really understand what accounting encompasses, right? Or maybe you don't want to get a CPA. Maybe you do some accounting classes and you want to do small business accounting, which are the bookkeeping roles, doing the payrolls for businesses, um, keeping their books, all those kind of things. We have everything from, we may just get things organized to do the tax return at the year end, or we may be doing every single thing from them. And we have someone go into their office once a week, twice a week to take care of stuff. So that doesn't require a CPA, that just requires, um, you know, a little bit of understanding of debits and credits and uh, a little bit of training in QuickBooks, which will help people get. So it doesn't have to necessarily be, it's a CPA or bust. There's a lot of things in between. And I think that accounting's not going anywhere. The world's changing, different kind of things are gonna to go to the wayside. There's gonna be some version of accounting from here to forever. And so I don't think there's any shame in having job security. I don't think there's any shame in having something that you know you can count on and you know that it can change with you and it can grow with you. So what you're doing today at Hansman Weeble may not be like anything like what you're gonna do for Hanson Weeble in 10 years, because it may be based on what your interests are, or it may be based on how the industry is changing. So I, I think the biggest takeaway is it's just it's changing. It's not gonna change as fast as some other industries, but it's changing, it's evolving, and it's, it's great for sort of this long-term career trajectory. We have some partners at our firm who started out PVCC transferring how many years later they're a partner? I mean, the sky's the limit. So um, it's it's just kind of exciting for what people perceive as being sort of this, this kind of small little world. It's exciting because there's so many different layers attached to it that I think that um, the learning and the possibilities are endless. Yep, Pam, uh, that's, those are, that's, that's great, Kim. Pam, do you have anything else you would want to add for from your perspective as having launched into this and that you're kind of like, hmm, what am I doing? You know, do you, do you see <laughs> industry trend, trends that you were, you're like, I think I might want to take advantage of that? Um, not, I haven't really, I guess I mostly just kind of, I haven't really checked out what else I could do besides work here so, so far, but I do, it is true. I work for a, I do a, have a client that I go out and visit maybe a couple times a month and do some 
small business stuff for them. So I think that, yeah, what, what I can say is that you don't need to have a CPA to be in accounting. You can, there are um, other jobs. And um, so, you, so even if you feel like that's just too much, you can, and I think you can always start. I think a lot of people start and say, do I like this? Do I want to keep going with pursuing that certification? So um, I think that's a great idea. So that's a question because I often, we referred to it earlier, the amount of math. And from what I can say now, Pam, you have a math background. <laughs> so, so this may not be, but oh, it's not that bad. Um, how much math does somebody really need? Because that's where our accounting professors have said, we don't even have a math prereq for taking our accounting classes because we don't think it's like calculus or you know, uh, you know, even statistics to a certain degree. So how would you say, what, what would the difficulty level that you guys would say? Do you think that's an artificial barrier that people have it in their heads that it's got to have a lot of math to be? Yeah, I think it's more simple math. You know, dividing, I mean, at percentages, if you understand percentages, so I would say you definitely don't need calculus. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that there are, I think there are some business math classes that might be good, you know, to take, mm -hmm. um, especially some of the, the accounting classes, they talk about interest and compound interest and all that stuff. So you will learn that stuff in your accounting classes. So you don't necessarily have to take a bunch of math. I don't really use, I don't use calculus ever. <laughs> the, the, it's, it's funny because uh, there's so few career fields that utilize calculus and, you know, engineering, architecture, you know, those things, but it's amazing how many students take it because they think that's what they should do to to get to the you know the call the four year colleges that say it's rigor, and it's like you know and I just as to me it's sad that there is this math disconnect with you know that it, calculus is not needed for every career field. Statistics is actually more of a applied math that uh, re relates to more career fields. So this question, because I, I know um, uh, I'm not seeing uh, questions that is that how do people handle the stress involved as career field? Because this time of year is particularly stressful. <laughs> wow. Um, well, it's interesting. Pre-pandemic looks different than post-pandemic or whatever we are pandemic-y now. Um, we... I love personally that we do a weekly check-in for the firm. It's not required, but we encourage everybody to attend. We, we get information out, but what I think we also do is we celebrate all of the fun stuff, big, little, in between, and all of the different little milestones and um, kind of cheerlead for each other, which I think is really great. Um, we have some traditions that we do and we've always done um, during busy season. We always had Girl Scout cookies, so we figured out a way to do it this year. Um, we, um, we check in on each other. I think we make a point of just, um, you know, quick hellos, making sure everybody looks good. Um, I think our firm's done a really great job of trying to make sure everybody's doing okay with the work-life balance. I've been known to grab somebody and take them for a walk because they just look like they're really like just maxed out. So let's just take 10 minutes. Let's walk around the block. Let's go get a cup of coffee. Um, I, I think it's just, I don't feel like this year has been as stressful, I think, because we really do get that we're all in it together. And we really do get that, you know, it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to, to just check in and just make sure, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think, Pam? Has it been, what was this year been like for you? <laughs> I think each week is different. It really depends. You know, I think yeah. it was one week where I had a large family of returns to do. And I probably did way, you know, a lot more hours and I worked all weekend and I, that's unusual. And I, and I talking to people in the office, I think getting exercise every day, like going for a walk, even if it's at night when you're, you know, for me, it was at, even if it's after my youngest has gone to bed and it's dark out, but getting outside and going for a walk and getting exercise. And then there, I know some people who say, I just don't do anything on Sundays. Like I just have to take a day, get in, you know, hours on the, on the rest of the days, but just make sure there is that day that I don't think about work so that I can come back Monday morning and have a clear focus again. Cause sometimes, you know, you do just need to, and you knowing when you need to take a break, even and if it's okay to take a break. 
Like it's, it's okay. And it's encouraged because sometimes you just have to walk away to refocus and that's okay for sure. Um, and I will say there's in public accounting, there's times we work a lot of hours, but we never, it seems like a lot, but in the big scheme of things, it isn't. We never encourage anybody during our busy season to work more than 55 hours a week, which seems like a lot, but there are a lot of companies that think 60 or 70 are normal. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not gonna say it doesn't happen sometimes because you're trying to finish something or you're trying to get something taken care of. Like Pam said, she worked over a weekend, but as a general rule, we discourage that because we just don't think it's healthy. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, that's where the burnout comes in and that's where, you're kind of like, what am I doing? What's the point? And we don't want people to get to that. So um, the balance, the balance looks different all the time, but overall, if you can kind of get it to, to work itself out, it's really important. Um, if you need to go, even if it's busy season, go to your kids, whatever at school, that's fine. Go take a couple hours, take care of it, do what you need to do. Um, you take a break in the evening because so you wanted to have dinner with everybody and, and get the kids to bed and then maybe work a little bit later, that's fine. As long as everybody is kind of in the loop of what you're doing, mm -hmm. so much better than feeling like you have to just start at, you know, eight o'clock and you can't leave until you're done. Well, that's just sad. <laughs> it's a little depressing. Well, and so it sounds like there's, it's not routine. It involves quite a bit of problem solving. Um, a lot of collegiality, even though you kind of work independently, because it sounds like you guys, you know, I love the words that you used, family, um, that you guys work together and, you know, and train each other and you know, support each other. And so that's where I, I, I think uh, it, it, it sounds like that um, it's a very supportive environment. Um, and that's where I, I do think that's where young people entering the field need to find those kinds of environments. Yeah. It's, it's important to find a place that you feel wherever it may be that you find a, a company and, and management that cares about you and cares about you, not just what you're gonna do for the company, but also cares about you as a whole person because it's bigger than just the work product for sure. So wherever people are looking or wherever they wanna land, they need to have that kind of in their focus. I have a son who's just graduating from college uh, in a couple of weeks. Um, I know, and as he's, interviewing and he's got like kind of these uh, like you know what you got to trust that gut instinct if, if you're feeling it now it's not going to feel better when you're there so the little voice in your head is there for a reason usually so just listen to it and find a place that's going to help you grow and give it a chance I'm a big believer the first year survival so don't use that as your judgment year to stay or go because everything is new and even people who have been working for a long time it's just the work is the easy part. It's the policies, the procedures, the software. It's it's all those kind of things. It's the second year when you finally get your groove and can kind of get a vibe of like how it feels. So you've got to give it time. It's not going to be an instant thumbs up or thumbs down. And I just encourage anyone, unless there's something, of course, that's just egregious, but give themselves a little runway to get comfortable and, and figure it out because it's just, you just don't know what you don't know. So how can you judge whether it's great or it's not? That's that's such great such great sage advice. Sounds <laughs> with age, I guess. <laughs> I, know, yeah. I think I had too much coffee today. Um, last little question, because I know we're running out of time. And if anybody um, who's uh, participating, if you have any questions, you need to put them in the chat now. So, knowing what you know today, what would you tell yourself to do when you were a student? So. Thinking back. I love that. I would have told myself to enjoy the journey to, so I went to, to college older. I was so focused on filling my requirements so I could get to the next piece. I wish I would have taken more classes just for fun. They don't have to necessarily go with what your end goal is because you just, it's an opportunity to explore give yourself a break like your career what you think you're going to be when you grow up at 20 is different than what you know you're 30 40 50 60 give yourself a break and it might evolve over time like I would have never ever thought I didn't set out to be an HR professional in public accounting like what but <laughs> all the twists and turns got me exactly where I needed to be so you just have to um, enjoy the journey and maybe take some risks that didn't feel like they made any sense but they ended up 
working out perfectly. Great. Pam, what about you? I agree with what Kim said, definitely. I also say, you know, invest in relationships and people. I think so often we get so focused on class and all and work and all that sort of stuff, but you know, who you are around and who you have relationships with people, like, I think that's really important. Um, I try and tell my kids that too, just, you don't have to have it all figured out at the age of 22. You don't know what you're gonna have to, you know, what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. Um, my mother was a great inspiration. She worked for, as an auditor till she was her, in her forties and then she went to medical school. So you, you don't necessarily know what, yeah, what life is gonna throw at you too. I think so often we have these plans and then we get disappointed when they might change or whatever. And so being flexible, I think just really, you know, trying to be flexible and having, have a sense of humor about yourself. And, you know, like I, sometimes I feel like I was really too serious and just focused on certain things that I shouldn't have been focused on. That was more just, um, I do wish I had taken more fun classes in college too. I, uh, I wish I had taken more art and just, classes that explore different things rather than just math and science, which I enjoyed, but I just, you know, in hindsight say, that's what you're there to do is to try different things and see what you like. And so, um, that, I think those are great um, suggestions. Actually, uh, you guys, both of you could consider career counselors, you know, becoming a career counselor. <laughs> That's something I say all the time. And I, and I, a big thing I oftentimes have to also reinforce with students is don't, don't take a failure and internalize it and let it set you back because that's where um, it, uh, I've just seen people derail themselves because it's, there, you know, and, I, and I've even seen it in our accounting program because some people go, oh, this is a nice, secure, safe, you know, um, and I like numbers. And then something happens and it usually involves other things external to school impacting the school as well. But then they just go, oh, I can't pursue this anymore because I didn't do well in that one class. And it's like, no, you can retake it, you know? And, you know, it, that is actually when I was at UVA, we, you know, everybody who's pre-med talking about your mother who did not do well in organic chemistry at UVA, I was like, go take it at PVCC. It's not that it's easier at PVCC, but there are many fewer people in the class. Don't give up on being a doctor just because organic chemistry didn't go well. So, but those are great pieces of advice. I'm looking at the chat. I'm not seeing more questions. So, um, Thank you both. This was just such great information. Um, this is of course being recorded and I will um, upload it to YouTube a little bit later and send you guys the link um, just in case you wanna share it with kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm you. love to see it. <laughs> oh my. Um, and I just wanna give a shout out if people have questions about accounting or just wanna figure out what we do, I am always happy to talk to people. Um, because again, it goes back to you just don't know what you don't know. So um, I am I come from a land of overshare. I'd like people to have all the information so that they can make good decisions. And so I'm always happy to talk to anybody, even if it's just like what it looks like and what do they do, whatever the case may be. Well, thank you so much for being an amazing community partner, because that's where we, as I started out with, we have uh, come to you a lot. <laughs> and I'm sure you're not going to drop off our, our list. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm waiting for in-person recruiting again just to see everybody it's so fun yeah we're um we're we're pretty sure we're going to do a fall job fair if it's if it's allowed so um and then also do a spring job fair as well um but that's where this this has been so so helpful um i'm going to stop the recording right now and then i'll just wrap it up with us but um thank you to all the participants who also joined us today tell your friends family anybody this will be on our website um, by this afternoon, and um, we we really appreciate you guys taking this time out in this particularly crazy time of year, considering the tax season. So, thank you so much, and I'm going to stop the recording now. Okay. Yep. <laughs>